Hello, this is Diaspora Weekly, uh, abbreviated versions of Diaspora Weekly. My name is Jermaine Nkrumah, and I'm joined by Michael Thompson, founder, CEO of Our Black Truth. Right? Yes, sir. Now, tell us about Our Black Truth. Okay. Our Black Truth is a platform designed to actually bring together those of the diaspora with those on the continent because we really don't know one another as we should and we have you know somewhat these fake differences kind of that was kind of um, beaten to us mm -hmm. so what we're trying to do is we're trying to make it so that there's open communications okay. because in the United States a lot of times I hear people say that Africans don't like African Americans yeah. I hear that all the time yeah. but then all my friends from the continent uh -huh. Man, they, they're cool. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. And I've never experienced that. It's a, I think it's a myth. You see, if you have about 10 people, mm -hmm. 10 on each side, right? Right. You might have two on each side that exhibit that. But guess what? That's the, the two that are going to be noticed. The eight that get along fine, nobody hears about them. Right. And so that's how it is. But I agree with you. We got to work hard to, to bridge the gap. Absolutely. So what, what got you that idea, though? Well, just um, looking at all the things that we go through, especially over the last few years with police brutality, not just in the United States, but across the world when it comes to our people. And just knowing that on these other platforms, they shut us down anytime we say something, even if it's a the truth, they'll shut us down. And when I thought about it, in, in the case of an emergency, we couldn't communicate. Yeah. So with my background, I said, well, let me go ahead and just build a platform that's ours that we control so that people can speak and communicate and don't have to worry about it being so tell know, us about the back, that background that got you into this wow okay well the background mm -hmm. started at 16 years old mm -hmm. with AT&T communications and I uh, started in customer service and then moved on to mainframes and databases and from there the internet age came around um, so you started before the internet age came around Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I did. So um, your fingers are you're one of those who fingers like this. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So see, I worked for a company called Quantum Computer Services back in the day, right. and they filed bankruptcy and came back as America Online. So ah, I was way back then. You were before America Online. Oh yeah, they were called Quantum Computer again? Services. Fifty three. Wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and, and they were headquartered uh -huh. right in my neighborhood, which is. Um, Northern Virginia. Oh, okay. It was actually Vienna, Virginia, Tyson's Corner area okay. where they were located. So, All right. Yeah. So this trip with the two of the three remaining survivors of the Tulsa race massacre. Mm -hmm. We're speaking here in Ghana, by the way. And you, this is, is this your first trip to Ghana? Man, this is my first time, but not the last. <laughs> because look, I'm telling you like this, right? Okay. Again, back on the whole thing of Africans not liking African Americans. Uh -huh. The people here like me better than the people better. at home. <laughs> you, you know, I'm serious. Wow. Yeah, it's like that. Well, maybe because he came in a company of if you. No, came, no. I, okay. I'm talking. About, I went. I went downtown, like Ghana. On your own. Yes, on my and own, with, with no, no presidential entry. security, uh, okay. no entourage, and, nothing. And what did you experience? People loving us. Right. You know? So this thing about Africans and African Americans and uh, Africans in a diaspora thing, we have to shut it down once and for. How are we going to yes. do that? Through education. Because the people that say that, they've never been here. Okay. And the people that's telling them this, they've never been here. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, so therefore, they really can't speak on it intelligently. Yeah. So you need that experience. You started, well, the idea of bringing uh, Mother Fletcher and Uncle Red to Africa, mm -hmm. it started with Our Black Truth. Is that correct? Well, actually, let me clarify. It did not start with Our Black Truth. Okay. It started with Mother Fletcher herself. Okay. She wanted to come to Africa. Okay. So, to make a long story short, we were celebrating the 100th anniversary of the Tulsa Massacre. Okay. And uh, while there, Ike and I, who's the grandson mm -hmm. of Mother Fletcher, we um, became friends, talked, hang out, and all that kind of stuff. So then I came back to Northern Virginia, just outside of DC, and I was sitting in a board meeting, I'd say about a week and a half, two weeks after being in Tulsa. So uh, my phone rang. So I picked it up while I was in my board meeting, and it was Ike. And he said, Michael, do you know anybody that knows anything about Africa? <laughs> okay. Do you know anything about Africa? Okay. I'm like, man, I just know the basic stuff like you do. That's it. <laughs> okay. I said, but you called at the right time. I have Dr. Tony Luck here. Uh -huh. 
and she's been living there for over 30 years. Oh, Tony Locke with you, was with you in the States at the time? Oh, oh. yeah, yeah, she's okay. my chief operate, okay. operating yeah. officer. Oh, very good, very so good. we were in a board meeting. <laughs> so I said, I'm gonna put you on speaker and let's talk about it. So I put him on speaker, he asked all the questions, she answered them all, and she, su and she suggested Ghana. So I figured, since she had all the answers, why doesn't Our Black um, Truth take Mother Fletcher and the family to Ghana? Okay. And that's how that really materialized and came about. How has it been? Man. Since the, first day. Wow, I'm telling like this, the flight was long. Mm -hmm. I was tired when I got off the plane mm -hmm. and all that. And as soon as I got off the plane, into press conferences, everything else. Mm -hmm. Man, I look a mess. Bum, bummed out, all that kind of stuff. Didn't brush my teeth, hair not combed. I know. I know. <laughs> but, um, you know, once we got all past all of that, man, it's been wonderful. It's yeah. been really good. We've had event after event after event, meeting kings and queens and princesses. Um, actually met the president and vice president, mm -hmm. took pictures with them, okay. and just met a whole host of other good people. Very good. And the citizenship. Mother Fletcher and Uncle Red are now Ghanaians. Yes. Want to be Ghanaian? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so, look, my plan is to become a Ghanaian uh -huh. and bring all my expertise and skills here. Because okay. that's what we need to do from the diaspora. Okay. Because I'm expert level when it comes to building our fiber optic infrastructure, wireless, satellite, um, all those kind of things. And when I look at the infrastructure here, it's really way behind what we have in the United States. Yeah. But the thing is, I've helped design a lot of what we have in okay. the U.S. So now you're, you're my new best friend. <laughs> DNT and All Black Truth uh, seem like a natural alliance. Right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So what are you gonna tell your friends when you go back? I'm gonna tell them, first of all, they need to go to Ghana because it's a really easy, friendly place. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing I didn't like about it, I needed a yellow fever vaccine because I don't like needles and stuff. <laughs> but other than that, I'm good. Okay. So, but I'm gonna tell them to come here mm -hmm. and to really check it out because it's, um, when I'm out here, I feel at home. I feel comfortable. There's something, it might sound crazy, but it feels like it awakens something within me to see my people in charge and living and doing things. It's as if, um, you know how they say that DNA has memory? Mm -hmm. I feel like the memory of my ancestors is speaking to me through my DNA because it's something familiar. Okay. But I just consciously am unaware of it because I've never experienced it. But I feel so connected here. Okay. And I think other people need to feel that as well. Very good. And so, um, a wrapping, wrapping this up, when you, um, when when the issue of Ghana came up, right, and I, I understand they they wanted to see the pyramids also, but it was Tony Lug that um, that suggested here, right? That's right. Uh, is there any time where you think hmm, the pyramids would have been nice instead of well? <laughs> well, I'm gonna tell you like this. I asked her why not. Egypt. Okay. Why not another place? Mm -hmm. And once she told me about the political environment in these places okay. and some of the social unrest okay. um, and some of the things that go on, mm -hmm. I felt that it would be best in Ghana because it's a safer environment. Okay. And then we were also given presidential protection, okay. which means a lot. Okay. And uh, to have that kind of support. So, and then we had medical teams that yeah. we could not have had elsewhere. Okay. So we needed to put Mother Fletcher's health and Uncle Red's health Absolutely. and well-being first. Yeah. How do you think they've handled it? From here, you've watched them. Do you see weariness? Because they, after all, they are one of, one, 107 and 100 respective. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I've seen younger people in your entourage going like, oh God. Yeah, <laughs> I was one of them. <laughs> man, I told Uncle Red, I'm tired, man. It's time to go. You know? he's, he's out there dancing and picking up girlfriends and everything. Yeah, he was out there dancing and just everything. And I was totally amazed at the energy that he has okay. and the clarity at 107 years old. Yeah. Mother Fletcher's clarity yeah. Yeah. is just incredible. It's, it's incredible. And, right. and, you know, and knowing Ike personally, Ike has that strong personality, yeah. right? But Mother Fletcher and Uncle Red, they keep him in check. Are you married? 
No, I'm not. You're not married. But so I mean, wait, Uncle Red picks up a girlfriend, and you are 53. You going up back to United States empty-handed? Oh no, no, no. My fiance is here with me. Ah. So I'm not married, but. Oh. <laughs> yeah. But. But. She's here with me, and she's uh, going back to the United States with me. Okay. I was trying to get you into trouble. It, it, it ain't working. Hey, uh, Michael, thank you so much for chatting with us. Uh, this is probably the first of many conversations that we're going to have. Yeah, absolutely. Um, diaspora Network Television, as you know, is uh, the voice of the diaspora and Pan-Africanism. So it seems like what you're looking to do and what we're looking to do is a natural alliance. So let's, let's talk. Yeah, absolutely. And can I say one more thing? If anyone wants to download the app, you can go to the Play Store, Google Play, or you can go to the App Store for iPhone and all that, and you do a search on Our Black Truth Social, because we have two apps. Okay. But you want Our Black Truth Social, that's okay. the social media platform, and then we have a video platform. Okay. So if you download that, you can help support this platform, and the more people we get on it, the bigger it'll grow. And, uh, and yeah. Right away. Oh, good. And we're trying to get everybody at least off of Facebook or going through both. And then once they try both, then they'll eventually migrate over to our platform fully because, yeah. uh, again, it's owned by us, run by us. And uh, that's what, the way it is. What's that? Uh What's that acronym? F U P U. Oh, FUBU. FUBU. Yeah, for us, by us. There you go. That's it. <laughs> All right.